Hi everybody, it's Dave from Dave's Life Over 65. Just making a quick video here. I am sorry I haven't made one for a while, but I've been kind of down in the dumps and I'm still dealing with my grief uh, and all that stuff. Um, but I decided to make this video because there's so much uh, chatter on the internet and uh, TV and radio and just at the office coffee pot and that sort of thing about the uh, um, so-called coronavirus. And uh, the coronavirus is uh, pretty serious and I'll go into that in just a second. But uh, I'll leave some links in the file about the um, about uh, where to go to get some more information from a better source than me. Uh, there's a fella in the States called the uh, Urban Prepper and he's got quite an informative and factual video about uh, exactly why the coronavirus um, is uh, the COVID-19 virus is so dangerous. So I'm not going to go into that. I'll leave a link to his, uh, to his webpage and you can uh, follow that to uh, his site and, and find out all about it. But the purpose of this is not to talk about the virus so much as preparing for the virus. Um, there's another uh, prepper called uh, Canadian Prepper, which uh, really goes into massive detail, more than you'd ever need, for pre prepping for just about any kind of natural or uh, unnatural disaster. So I, I encourage you to go to that, pre that website for what to do, uh, what to stock. And also, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, um, uh, Survival Lily, has just made a video and uh, she's actually going to make a bunch of videos and she's going out because uh, it is kind of um, serious in Austria where she lives so I strongly rec recommend you go to uh, Survival Lily and uh, see what she's up to and okay so on with my video so regarding uh, the COVID-19 virus or the coronavirus as everybody calls it Incidentally, the Spanish influenza that everybody knows about was a uh, corona-type virus, so it is pretty serious. However, uh, so far in Canada, it has not, um, it is not, there has not been that many cases, uh, although it has doubled in the last week. Uh, we went from, I think, 7 to 14. And most of those uh, most recent uh, infections were picked up in... Uh, Iraq, I think, or no, sorry, Iran, and one of those two, anyways, and uh, more li more than likely, they were all coming back on the same plane, and somebody who was infected was aboard, but uh, we'll probably hear more about that on the news. What I'm doing is not so much about the virus itself, but uh, things you should think about. Um, first of all, if uh, it's... it's um, it's a pretty serious outbreak. We have uh, just found out that the uh, uh, World Health Organization has m moved the uh, virus uh, level, threat level, from uh, whatever it was before to very high, which is one step down from pandemic. So there's a very good chance that this could become a pandemic, and uh, that would not be a good thing. Uh, but uh, even if you don't contact the virus, even if you're very careful and take uh, all the uh, safety protocol around viruses and you don't get it and no one in your family gets it, you will still be affected by the outbreak. If it goes, uh, if the um, panic level kicks in and with the World Health Organization moving it up to very high, that's uh, a very possible event and that could be uh, it could have already started in fact I have a feeling the initial stages of the uh, the panic has already begun for example you are unable to buy a N95 mask of any type anywhere in Ontario probably Canada and I understand it's just as bad in the United States part of the reason for that is the um, people that make the masks, the majority of the companies that make those masks are in China and are overwhelmed by their own, uh, their own outbreak. Um, the other thing is uh, people are starting to, to uh, 
go to drugstores and grocery stores and buy, th buy up things they think may help them from um, becoming infected. Uh, for example, um, this stuff, um, hand sanitizer. By the way, if you see me winch, um, I, pulled some, I pulled a muscle in my back last night and I'm waiting for the uh, muscle relaxants to kick in. Um, so that's one thing you cannot get. The other thing is, uh, is uh, these things, spray sanitizers for you know, which is a very good thing to have on hand. I just happened to, I found a drugstore next to uh, um, a no frills, which still had some stock on Lysol, so I picked up an extra can. I also picked up bleach, uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol, and glycerin. Now, you might wonder, why did I pick up glycerin? Okay, glycerin in Canada, I believe, is rather difficult to get because it is a component used in the um, making of nitroglycerin, which is actually very easy to make, and I'm not going to go into that right now. But um, on talking with a, um, a uh, pharmacist, I... Uh, Ask him if I could make my own hand sanitizer, and he said, just use alcohol. Just put it in a spray bottle and spray it on your hands and rub them together. I thought I would get something. Uh, one of the things about the commercially available hand sanitizer, like this, won't oh, focus. Oh, I love this phone, is that it is um, very thick which means it stays on your hands a bit longer, where alcohol will immediately vapor, vaporize off. So uh, my idea was to buy some glycerin and mix it with alcohol and make my own hand sanitizer. And uh, he agreed that that was a good idea. So uh, that's why I picked up the glycerin. Also, uh, I have picked up some uh, bleach. Again, a great... Uh, sanitizer and uh, that's uh, for dishes and stuff like that but I think the most useful thing that I have are the uh, nitrate gloves um, there's been a run on masks in Toronto there are no N95 type masks available anywhere in Toronto and there isn't likely going to be for the next uh, foreseeable future so, um, but the uh, uh, health uh, people in Canada are stating that uh, the, the face masks that you just kind of loop over your ears uh, are really not that effective because they leave air gaps where you are still breathing in unfiltered um, air. <clears throat> and they're not available anyway, so... Um, that's one area that we're, you're going to have to be careful because this disease is airborne. And uh, hopefully everybody that is infected or thinks they may be infected will wear a mask. Uh, even if it isn't an N95 mask, it uh, will slow down the um, acceleration of the uh, virus components as they're going through the air. But the other problem is if you have the virus, and you sneeze, more than likely you are going to sneeze on something, such as the buttons in an elevator or a doorknob or something. For example, if you have um, um, symptoms of the um, virus, which I'm going to go into in a little more detail in a minute, um, you may decide to go and get some cough syrup. If you pick up a bottle of cough syrup, and decide that's not the one you want and set it down, you may have already, you may have passed the virus on to that uh, bottle of uh, cough syrup. And the problem is, this virus can exist outside the body for a very long period of time. And the other problem with this virus is that it uh, has a very long 
by virus standards, that is, uh, incubation period in excess of 14 days, which means you can have the virus for two weeks and not even know you have it. And uh, in, the, in the meantime, you'd be spreading it all over the place. That's how a pandemic um, happens. Um, now I'm going to go off into an area of um, speculation. This is my opinion and my opinion alone, and it's not necessarily backed up by scientific evidence, but I feel that this virus, the COVID-19, is a bio-modified, uh, uh, genetically modified um, virus. I think it has been deliberately changed so that it is more virulent, more, um, uh, more easily spread. I believe it has been weaponized. Um, the uh, lab that was right next to Ground Zero for the uh, COV-19 outbreak was a Chinese government lab, and they had bats and other animals which they had deliberately infected. I can only see one reason for doing that, and that is to um, cause an, ep an epidemic somewhere. One would think they wouldn't do it on their own people, but that seems to be what happened. Anyways, that's just... My opinion, I am, I'm basing this on things that I've read uh, on the way the virus is acting and how uh, it's impossible for scientists and doctors to uh, come up with a vaccine for it because it mutates every two uh, generations apparently and it may be mutating now every single generation so it's going to be impossible if that's the case to uh, come up with a virus. And of course, the flu shot we got, uh, we all got, I think we all got, you, you got your flu shot, right? Um, is useless against the, uh, the uh, COVID-19 virus. Okay, so um, if, uh, if a pandemic happens, um, it's going to be at least two weeks before all the people who are infected start showing symptoms. And in the meantime, they will have infected other people and and those people will infect other people and so on. Um, this could cause a breakdown in our, uh, our system of supply and demand. And as you know, the uh, bean counters have decided it's, it's more profitable for them if they uh, go to a just-in-time. So everything arrives in your grocery store and your uh, uh, drug store and places like that um, in smaller quantities. And they only reorder when they've sold something. Well. The N95 masks, no, I'm sneezing, I hope I don't have it, but anyways, um, could be just a common cold. Anyways, um, what I'm getting at is that um, if the panic starts, and it may, we may be on the cusp of just that sort of thing, it starts out slowly. Uh, basically things become sold out and the fact that things are sold out get, makes people nervous and then there's a run on grocery stores and uh, drug stores and anywhere there may be food and uh, products you might need in, the, in, a, um, in an epidemic and uh, especially in a pandemic. So uh, store shelves will sell out probably in less than an hour if uh, if the, and remember, the people that disseminate the information about these diseases are in business to make money. They're profit-oriented, so they will bend the uh, story so that it looks worse than it may be just to get people to watch their channel. And uh, that kind of irresponsible journalism would cause, definitely cause a panic. And if a panic happens, um, by the time you get off work and decide to go to the grocery store, the shelves should be empty, well, would, could be empty, I should say. And uh, so what I'm, I'm saying is that you need to go now, right now, and uh, go to the grocery store, assuming you've seen this video before the panic has, has happened. And um, I'm hoping that the panic doesn't happen, but uh, if it does, uh, you better have some stuff stored in your in your uh, basement or in a closet or something because there's going to be one one thing is you may your area where you live may be locked down this is already happening in the United States 
you will not be able to drive outside of your neighborhood to go shopping. Um, which, which brings up the point, what about people who require medita med medication? What about people that require medication? Well, they're going to be in a very bad position if they don't have at least a month's supply. Um, here in Canada, we have a, a government-sponsored uh, uh, drug plan for seniors. And uh, the problem with that is um, they will not allow you to stock up on your medication. And uh, that means that if you, uh, if you just got your uh, medications, uh, you will not be able to get more until next month. And that may be, there may be no medication to get next month. Um, although I don't, uh, I would think that would be mostly uh, um, antivi antivirals and things like that. But anyways, uh, food-wise, you want to make sure you've got enough food in your cupboards to uh, feed your family and your pets. And, uh, you know, uh, simple things. Now, what I did is, I'm not really that... Um, uh, knowledgeable on being prepared for this type of pandemic and even if I was I just simply don't have the money to stock up for three or four months as they recommend but I can prepare for um, a couple of weeks and I don't think water is going to be an issue um, unless the people that uh, run the machinery at the water filtration plants don't go to work that's our Coast Guard I'm just listening to them um, what was it? Oh yeah. So I've ran out and bought some uh, just things that popped off the top of my head, things that I have nothing. So <clears throat> let me uh, show you what I've got. Okay, I've got some bleach. I have lots of bleach, but I figured I won't hurt to pick up another one. I mentioned the glycerin and the alcohol, what I'm going to do with that. Importantly, I have the Lysol spray, nitrate gloves, and uh, food-wise, I haven't really got a lot of stuff. I'll probably have to go out tomorrow and look at some other things. Here we have um, some soap. I was completely out of soap, so now I've got enough of, to last me for... Uh, I'm a single now, so it's just me. So that's going to last me for a while. I have lots of toilet paper. I have some uh, noodles, which I can make soup with. I have um, a, um, two bags of um, white kidney beans, which you can cook and uh, make uh, very, very uh, tasty and nutritious uh, beans. I think they're the same beans they use in the cans of beans I have in the background there. I also bought some tomato sauce in case I decide to cook up the um, kidney beans. I also got a, a bunch of uh, trail mix, which is you know good for keeping the stomach from rumbling. And I got my uh, first aid kit out of the car and brought it up. Um, actually, no, this is one from my pack. I have a bigger one in the car, which I can go down and get at any point. The other thing you want to consider is... Um, People may, uh, in a panic, people may decide that they might have to bug out, go to the cottage or whatever, so they'll, they'll be a run on gas. And they do the same thing as grocery stores. Uh, they only order gas when they're almost out, so you should really consider filling up your car as soon as uh, possible and keeping it topped off, which is something I need to do tomorrow as well. So... So uh, that's, uh, that's it for now. Just a couple of things that I've picked up. I'm going to do a little more thinking. I'm going to look at some videos tonight and uh, see what's, uh, what else I should get. And uh, I hope all of this preparation is unnecessary, but it would be good to have this stuff if it isn't. Have a great day. Be safe. And hopefully the next video I make will be uh, this uh, pandemic pandemic fear will be behind us.